Welcome to the Glenn Mercer Show, where we talk all things vegan. If you're not already vegan, no worries, we'll get you there. If you are, tune in for health advice, information on climate change, and all the damage done by our most destructive industry, animal agriculture. We'll also talk cooking, theater, film, and culture. My two reasons for starting this podcast, to entertain, to inform, and to make people vegan. Oh, that's three. Shit. Hello and welcome to the Glenn Merzer Show. You could find us across all your favorite podcast platforms. You could find us on YouTube. Please remember to subscribe. And you can find us at realmeneatplants.com. My special guest today is one of the most important people in the animal rights and vegan movements. Jane Velez Mitchell is an Emmy award-winning journalist, a former reporter and host for CNN Headline News, and the founder of Unchained TV. Jane, welcome to the show. Great to be here, Glenn. Let's start first by talking about Unchained TV. What gave you the idea for it? Tell our listeners all about it. Well, I was in mainstream media for more than 30 years, and I saw with my own eyes on a daily basis and continue to see the mainstream media blackout on anything to do with veganism or animal rights. And it's a very simple reason why. Look at the advertisers, the people who keep the lights on for mainstream media, fast food and pharmaceuticals, who are one and the same, essentially, in terms of, of their motivations, which is to make money. And so uh, I decided let's do an end run around the mainstream media blackout on animal rights and veganism for the sake of our planet, for the sake of animals, for the sake of human health. And so uh, once I essentially retired from mainstream media, I had a good run. Um, and as you mentioned, most recently on CNN headline news, where I want to say I was very grateful they allowed me to do an animal rights segment once a week for six years, which wow. is kind of shocking. But what happened was when I got hired there, I had been uh, reporting for a, basically a tabloid show, uh, having worked as an anchor in news media across the United States for quite a few years. I was at a tabloid show covering big trials, started filling in for Nancy Grace. And um, I somebody walked off the set in a huff and they needed a host. They called me and they said, would you like a show? I said, yes. They said, well, we'll call it Issues with Jane Velez Mitchell. I said, great, because I've got a lot of issues. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and then I said, would you mind if I did a little animal segment once a week? And they thought about it. They said, they probably thought I was going to do pet adoptions, which I did right. throw in every so often. So sure enough, I have the show. I thought I'd have it for two months. I was really basically a fit, fit, fill this spot quickly person. But I ended up keeping it for six years. And every Friday, I did a hardcore animal rights segment. And we interviewed all the heads of the organizations and covered things like pig gestation crates and also up and coming people in the alternative protein space like Josh Tetrick. I mean, we were all over as animal rights. And to their credit, they didn't stop me for six years. I mean, I'm sure it made a lot of people uncomfortable, but we did it. So after that show ended, after a good run, I said, well, I'm kind of unchained now because when you're a reporter or an anchor, you can't go to protests and participate. And I knew that was kind of the end of the, you know, that was the, that was the, it wasn't going to get any better than that. So I didn't want to do this whole circling the drain thing. I decided I'm just going to go out and start doing stuff on my own. And so I started going to protests in New York with a little GoPro camera. And the first thing I noticed was people are going to tremendous lengths with these elaborate protests in the freezing cold. Nobody's memorializing it. No media is covering it. And then I would say to the, the organizer, well, have you told the media? Oh, yeah, they were going to come, but there was a breaking news story. Of course, I rolled my eyes. That's what you say to anybody when you want to blow them off. It's like it's always cocktail hour somewhere. It's there's always a breaking news story. It's right. the excuse that media uses. So that that's when I decided to start basically doing my little Friday segment every day. And um, we started doing all these reports and putting them on social media. Then. Facebook started allowing lives. Then we really took off. For five years, we did a daily vegan cooking show called Lunch Break Live, which literally got tens of millions of views. I uh, think my wife and I were on that one. Yeah, we had everybody on it every single day. We didn't miss one single day. 
not even, you know, New Year's Eve or 4th of July, it was always on. Sometimes people would drop out at the last second and I had to cook, which wasn't necessarily a treat for the audience. I once set uh, my cutting board on fire live, but in any <laughs> case, we had a lot of fun. So then the algorithms changed where they used to send it out to 10,000 people. All of a sudden we noticed, wait, now it's 5,000. Now it's 700 people. Now it's what happened. So we all know that Facebook in the swirl of everything uh, changed their algorithms. And so then we had to pivot. So at that point, we decided to create a very high profile celebrity packed vegan cooking show called New Day, New Chef and put it on Amazon Prime. It's the winner of two taste awards. And it was hundreds of thousands of views all over the English speaking world. They kept adding areas that they were gonna show it. It was great. Uh, Billie Eilish even did a cameo. Um, it was really quite successful. One day after maybe, I don't know how long, several months, they decided they're gonna charge 99 cents an episode. And it went from like hundreds of thousands of views down to like a thousand views. So then we had to pivot again. And so my producer, uh, who's a wonderful Irishman, Eamon McChrystal, he said, well, we can start your own streaming network if you want. I said, <laughs> let's do it. So that's how Unchained TV, the global world's only vegan streaming television network that's on the Samsung TV behind me was born. It now has almost 2000 videos, documentaries, cooking shows. What you see right behind me is Black uh, uh, Black History Month. We're going to do a whole show later today uh, oh. featuring uh, some leaders in the vegan uh, African-American community. Uh, but if you, sh I could show you, look at the number of shows that we have here. of content. You know. All free. Right. All free. This is a 501c3 nonprofit. Free is the number one search term of streaming device users. And if nothing else, I just want to urge everybody, if you care about animals and the planet, this is the world's only vegan streaming network for animal rights and the vegan lifestyle. You can download it for free on your phone as well as your TV with a, any Samsung TV or any television using an Amazon Fire Stick, a Roku device, or an Apple TV device, okay? And you can also download it for free on your phone. And the great thing about it on your phone is that you can take any one of these videos and text it to somebody. Like you have uh, a relative who's um, a militant, you know, I'm not gonna change, I've eaten this way. Well, but now he's got heart disease. This just happened to me with a neighbor not so long ago. I said, look, I'm gonna text you forks over knives. Will you please watch it? I hit this text. I texted him forks over knives, boom. I could text it right there. He watched it. He said, I'm trying to eat more vegetables. I'm trying to bring, when I ran into him the next time. So you have somebody who says, I could never give up cheese. We have a whole bunch of documentaries about why cheese is bad for you. Alternative lamp-based cheese, quote unquote, cheese recipes. So it's very solutionary. But what I ask people to do is, Download it, damn it, because people say, oh, yeah, I'll do it later. And we're getting a lot of downloads, but there's one thing I've noticed. People say they're going to do it later. They often don't do it. It's literally you just go to your app store on your phone, either Android or um, one of these iPhones, and you just put in Unchained TV, one word, and you just click and there it is. We don't even require a subscription. We prefer if you put your email in because then we can send you notices and uh, notifications like you would find out, boom, this interview's coming up, right? But we, we don't wanna have any barriers. So we don't charge anything to anybody and we don't even require them to subscribe. Um, all we say is download it. And uh, it's it's really fun. I mean, we have Eating Our Way to Extinction. We just added McLibel. That was the latest yeah. film I just added um, two nights ago, uh, which is really brilliant, about two people who stood up to McDonald's and what resulted was the longest trial in English history. Right. Fascinating people story. You don't have to be. Here's another thing, Glenn. I want to burst through the vegan echo chamber. 
I don't know about you, but if I go to one more screening where we have to watch horrific footage of animals being tortured and everybody in the room is already vegan, I'm going to just eat my hat because we already know this. We have to get that information to the general public. So what we have created is a very powerful portal to 8.1 billion humans. This is a global streaming network. We just added a, a, a London correspondent who says, I have it on my TV. I have it here. It's, it's not available in China and maybe a couple of other countries like North Korea. I don't have the exact list, but it's available in 99% of the world. And now what we have to do is unlock the code to get this information and these videos to 8.1 million humans, 8.1 billion. billion humans. Yes, yeah. billion, billion, billion. But here's the point. We don't have a multi-million dollar advertising budget. When I drive around Los Angeles where I live and I look up and there's a billboard for Netflix and there's a billboard for you know Amazon Prime and there's a billboard for Hulu, we don't have that. What we need, this, does, this doesn't belong to me. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. This belongs to everybody. It belongs to you. It, it's a community app. Every Most of the big organizations from PETA to Mercy for Animals and on have donated content. So each big organization has a, a, has a channel within this network. So if you like Mercy for Animals, you can send um, a video about Mercy for Animals. Also, we have profiles of vegan leaders. Uh, some of the people we're interviewing today, like Gwenna Hunter, uh, Vegans of LA Food Bank, uh, Brenda Sanders, the founder and executive director of the Afro Vegan Society. We have content. Moby gave us his punk rock vegan movie. Right. And then, then we have another great movie called Hero Dog, Earthlings, of course, the, the film that has turned more people vegan than any other film is right there. If I would say once you download this, if you have somebody that you know in your life who says, eh, you know, leave me alone. It's a choice. Just, hey, you don't have to sit there and argue with them. Just send them earthlings and then say, did you have the courage to watch it? And if you don't, you can need to look in the mirror. OK, so Hogwood, a, mo a modern horror story. Dairy Disclosed. That's another great one. Award winning film. You see all the awards. But again, take action, people. We're not asking you to go and do an open rescue or march in the streets or get arrested. What I am saying to you is there's too many people on this planet to talk to them individually. Please take advantage of this portal, which belongs to everybody in the vegan movement, and download it on your phone. Any Samsung TV, you just go to the Smart Hub and you go, Unshade TV. When you put in the first four words, it comes up. And remember, it's one word. There you go. I've said it. All right. Now, are you able to monitor how many people around the world of that 8.1 billion are accessing your content? Well, here's the thing. With short form content like Instagram, you look at views because a three second view can count as a view. But with streaming networks, which is primarily long form content like documentaries, our talk shows, cooking shows, a view could be somebody clicking through just to get to the next video. So what we count is minutes watched. And our minutes watched are going up, up, up. Um, we Between our streaming uh, network and our Facebook views, in six months, we had over a million minutes watched. Okay. So we're growing. But again, it's a process, not an event. Rome wasn't built in a day. We've created this very powerful platform for next to nothing. Um, streaming networks, there are big companies spending literally billions with a B dollars on their streaming networks. We created this initially for about $45,000 and it does require money. It's a monthly fee. There's, there's, there's definitely costs involved. So I can also urge you guys, if you like all this and you go, wow, this is great. You can go to unchainedtv.com and you can become a monthly donor for the price of a cup of coffee. We have more than a hundred monthly donors right now, $10 a month, $25 a month, $5 a month. We'll take it. And you just put donate and you become a monthly donor. And then we just had a Zoom just for just for donors where we go through all the stats and everything we're doing and explain to people exactly what we're doing so that nobody has to feel like they're just, 
you know, giving money and they don't know what the uh, what the outcome is. And, uh, you know, I can also something I could do very easily if you want is I could give you a tour if you allow me to share my screen. Absolutely. The streaming network. And uh, then people can see exactly what we're talking about. OK, hold on a second. Sure. All right. You should be enabled there you go. to share your screen. OK, and we are up. Where's the second? Well, it does. It has the first one, but well, here we go. Let me just give you a, a tour. OK, so we again, um, this is McLibel, which is an incredible documentary. We just started that one. Oh, when, when uh, was that made, McLibel? Oh, it was made many years ago, but they keep republishing mm -hmm. it because it is it is really a powerful story. In fact, it inspired me because every day, honestly, there's something that happens that brings me to my knees and go, oh, my God, why? Why? But then I think about these two who endured years of having their lives completely taken over by this case. And all they did was show up. So you know what they say? 90 percent of success is just showing up. Keep going. I found it very, very inspiring. So um, we did an entire you're seeing this, right? Yes. Yes. OK, here's an entire Black History Month category that we created. And we're going to be interviewing, for example, the woman, Jasmine Laban, who did the documentary, uh, The Invisible Vegan. There's Tabitha Brown. Uh, there's uh, uh, an incredible activist, Charlize Rookwood, 10 million Black vegan women. Uh, that's uh, Tracy McWhorter. So we have a lot of content celebrating I mean, just look at any one of them. This is inspiring. Would you like to have this guy's physique? Well, I do. <laughs> Maybe you do. I, I mean, I'm not <laughs> doubting you. We weren't supposed to laugh at that. Sorry. I coach, I train. I've been vegan since 1998, and I'm here for the planet, the animals and the betterment of humanity. So right there, if you have somebody, we all have friends, oh, but I need my protein. Yeah. And you know, okay, that guy got plenty of protein, all right? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> or somebody says, for example, oh, it's so boring though. This lady is definitely not boring. She is anything but. So there you go. I mean, a lot of fun. Now, we just did this show, which got global media attention. Yeah, I tell, tell us you. about the Jenners at home oh, with yeah. the Jenners. Well, yes, this got global media attention. I have to say it was our breakthrough. It put us on the map. And um, we were a six-page spread in People magazine, followed by uh, stories uh, in The Sun, The Daily Mail, The Mirror. Those are the biggest papers in England, TMZ. Uh, Newsweek, it was unbelievable. Check this out. There you go. At home with the Jenners, um, the Jenners, Brandon Jenner is a reality TV star. Uh, Princes of Malibu, keeping up with the Kardashians. He and his wife, Kaylee Jenner, are plant based and they love animals. They have companion, lots of companion animals, companion chickens, companion tortoises or a tortoise. Sorry. And they want to share 
their lifestyle with the world. They also take food from their own garden. They live in Malibu and they cook it up. It's an adorable show. And because of his celebrity um, and their celebrity, we ended up getting some global coverage. Um, and so we also do serious, you know, very serious stuff. Like here's Josh Tetrick. We just did this. Interview. When you think about reasons why alternative protein matters, it matters because you shouldn't be harming animals, right? It matters because you don't need to be knocking down rainforests and putting up carbon emissions in our atmosphere. Um, it also matters because food is a, is a sacred thing. Hello, and welcome to Tomorrow's Plate. I'm Julietta, and today I'm talking to Josh Tetrick, CEO at Eat Just and Good Meat. He was named one of Time 100's Climate People of the Year. We're having a conversation about the future of alternative proteins and what this could mean for the world. Josh, let's start out with your two products, your Just Egg and Good Meat Chicken, which is cultivated. Can you break these two products down so people understand what they're eating and tell us how they're made and why this type of production is revolutionary? Uh, Just Egg is a plant, but it makes an egg. So instead of needing to house billions of chickens and feed them lots of soy and corn that requires about a third of the planet um, just to grow, we found a bean called a mung bean. I didn't know about the mung bean growing up in Alabama, but it turns out the mung bean uh, is rich in nutrition and also really rich in functionality. And there's a protein in the mung bean that we remove from it that when you put in the pan after you mix with some other ingredients, scrambles up like an egg, um, but it doesn't have any cholesterol. It has uh, three times less saturated fat, uses 70% less land, water, and carbon emissions than a conventional chicken egg. And now it is sold all across the country. So um, in Walmart and Whole Foods, Safeway and ShopRite and Publix, so pretty much wherever you are, across the United States, you can have a better version of an egg that doesn't require all the resources, all the intensity. And we think ultimately the world's most consumed egg will be from a plant. Um, the other um, product that we do is a product called Good Meat. Um, it's not plant-based, it's meat-based, uh, but instead of requiring the slaughter of an animal, it requires removing a cell from uh, a cell bank uh, or even a, a biopsy of the animal in a, in a painless way. And then from that single cell, uh, you can actually manufacture meat at scale. And we're the first company in the world to ever receive approval to make this new kind of meat called cultivating meat. Uh, we received approval for that in Singapore in late 2020. And more recently received approval from both the FG and the USDA to sell it in the United States. So um, now I understand that some people, some vegans are, it's very controversial. Uh, we do cover uh, cultivated meat. M my personal feeling is that if I were a cow about to have my tail cut off and uh, my baby ripped away from me and tortured in all sorts of ways, uh, if somebody said, take a couple of cells from one cow, uh, and I know there's controversy about it, but we do cover uh, cultivated meat on Unchained TV. And I will say that just after we did that interview with Josh Tetrick, by the way, he was one of the people that I interviewed when I had my show on CNN Headline News. And he told me, he said he used that interview to go out and initially raise funds. This was way back before uh, he had, you know, hit the big time and become, you know, person of the year or whatever. Um, but he, it, it's interesting that we've come full circle. Right after we did that interview, the New York Times uh, ran this, I would call it a hit piece against him, basically saying that it's, you know, empty promises with the cell-based meat, even though they just got approval last year. I mean, you know, uh, that it's a process, not an event. So, I mean, I... Weigh in, please. But well, this I, is the I, kind of stuff we cover. I, I am an advocate of, you know, the free press and journalism. So I think it's great that you're presenting his point of view. And I'm sure you would also present the point of view of someone like Dr. Milton Mills, who's a great skeptic mm -hmm. of lab meat. Uh, you could put me down as one of the skeptics. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I remember when I was a kid, 
uh, being told that maybe I was seven years old, that within 10 years, we'll all be on the metric system. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to have the same view when I hear that we're going to have lab meat. I don't really believe it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, it's so energy intensive and so difficult to create that my whole emphasis is on trying to help people transition to eat whole foods as they exist rather than um, rather than lab meat. And of course, from a health perspective, it's still meat. So I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of lab meat, but I am a fan of journalism. And I have nothing right. against putting his case on the air and then putting the case of those who argue against it. Yeah. Well, I, you know, appreciate your, your perspective. Um, and so, yes, we cover that issue. Uh, it could be the one exception. There's two exceptions to entirely plant-based. We also have uh, tigers and a couple of carnivore animals that we showcase. Essentially, what happened is here, um, there was Earthstream, which was a similar streaming network, uh, and uh, they weren't nonprofit though, and they closed their doors. And I called the head of Earthstream, wonderful guy, and I said, hey, you put so much work into all of these videos that you accumulated uh, about nature, like for example, Big Cat Rescue, and why don't you allow us to have some? Uh, and so he graciously took a large percentage of his content and facilitated us running it. So um, we have a lot of content about the rescue of rhinos, the rescue of tigers, the rescue of elephants. And there are some animals who are not, a uh, few of them, just the tigers, pretty much the big cats that are not vegan. Um, but obviously we're covering, look, Rick O'Berry's dolphin project. Um, so there you go. This is a, this is a very powerful um, video about, I'll let you watch it. These are two and a half gallons each? Yep, fill me up. Basically, the uh, dairy industry the aligns with local government officials to deprive the Thule elk at Point Reyes National Seashore of water by fencing dry, them in. And, We're put and these heroic side, animal the rights activists basically oh. risk their lives in the middle of the night to get water to the Thule elk. This is an example of just how morally bankrupt our government is that they would allow a species that, by the way, millions of tourists come to Point Reyes National Seashore not to see the dairy industry that it's ensconced there, but to see these beautiful wild we animals. Here we have some water. At and least the elk they were trying to, to deprive tonight. them of water. I don't think they're going to learn about this tomorrow, maybe wow. in a couple days. But the fog is in. We're out here in a beautiful place. So basically, elk everyone who creates these now. documentaries, they donate them. Yes. To Unchained yes. TV. Yes. And we work with groups. Like I work with Switch for Goods, Dotsie Bausch. She's the Olympic cyclist who yes. is trying to get people to ditch the breast milk of cows. We just did this protest. Uh, she organized it, but we helped promote it and we videotaped it. And we were right there. So check it out. Put your money where your mouth is and stop the upcharge of the plant-based milk now! What the hell is up, you guys? My name is Jamie Logan, and we're here in Los Angeles outside of Starbucks. We are asking, we are demanding that they drop the surcharge on plant-based milk. And let's find out why. Extra charges aren't fair. So we are here because we have been working for two and a half years trying to get Starbucks to drop their plant milk upcharge. It's 70, 80 cents, 80 cents at the top. Extra to have planet friendly, animal friendly, people friendly, health friendly plant milk. And as many of you know now, because we've been doing this work for so long, 35% of Americans cannot digest dairy. 80% of people of color all over the world, it makes them sick, uncomfortable, and in some cases, unable to breathe. Yet, 
That milk is free at Starbucks and they're charging for planet friendly plant milk. It's insanity. So we're pushing hard. We are here today because we are putting a package together for their new CEO, Lakshman, who is from the eastern side of the world where Almost everyone that he grew up with can't digest cow's milk. Dairy milk what what happened pain. with that? Did Starbucks in that upcharge? No, that we no? just did this the other day. So They're just showing you. Upcharging. Yes, we here in the United States. They don't do it in some European countries. Just uh -huh. like when I was in Zurich and I walked across from my hotel to the Starbucks, they had fabulous vegan falafels. They know how to do vegan food. They know how to not charge for the upcharge, but they still do it here in the United States. Uh, there you see me protesting right there with the sign screaming my head off. Um, so how do we help organizations? Well, we help promote this. We help bring people to this. And then we videotaped it and we edited this story. And Dotsie, who I think is one of the most incredible activists, and I love her collaborative spirit, I would urge everyone. See, this is just an example of collaboration. Unchained TV and Switch for Good collaborated, and the sum is greater than its parts. Uh, you know, uh, I basically want to help any organization um, who obviously has a uh, a vegan animal rights uh, perspective, get the word out because animals can't speak for themselves. And this is this is one way that we can do it by attending protests and editing a story together. We have very good editors, as you can see. And uh, so that's the kind of collaboration that we have. And so if it, there's anybody from an organization, a nonprofit organization watching, and you have videos, as long as they're horizontal, we do need landscape videos, we can uh, create a channel for you. I'll just show you some of the um, some of the organizations that we have cooperated with and have a channel, plant-based treaty. We've done the same thing. We've attended their protests and uh, done reports on their protests. Rowdy Girl Sanctuary, uh, one of my favorite sanctuaries in the world. In Texas, the former cattle rancher turned vegan with her husband. Farm Sanctuary, we have great animal videos. These are really good to send to people who, oh, they can't, They oh, it's a choice. I can't, don't show me, don't show me. Well, you could show very inspiring videos that focus on one animal, okay? And will uh, show the story of one, open their hearts with these kinds of videos that Farm Sanctuary is so good at putting together.
It's beautiful. I hate to think that when I was a child, my mother served me something called lamb chops. Yes, and that's the I Farm Sanctuary is so good at putting these videos together. I mean, I choked up. You can't help but so sometimes if people can't respond to one message, you show them another, and that message. You, the average person who eats lamb chops might be looking at that going, oh my gosh, all those people went to such lengths to rescue this one lamb. Maybe I should not eat lamb chops. You know, uh, it, it, we we have all sorts of different content for different people who respond differently. Mercy for Animals has incredible uh, videos as well. We also do some very fun stuff. Um here we did something called the lingerie protest. And this was one of our most viewed videos, perhaps for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the media and the news seldom report on this topic. In the dairy industry, the male calves are murdered. It's not like we want to do these things. We feel that we have to. We need to do whatever it takes to help wake people up, to make the unconscious conscious. The future of our planet is at stake. And if I gotta go out there naked, I'll do that. Working in the modeling industry, sex is used a lot as a tool to sell garments, to sell all kinds of things, and it can be used to sell ideas too. Oh my God, amazing. <laughs> so I really wanted to draw attention to animal rights because animal agriculture is incredibly cruel. Animals live in just awful conditions and it's causing vast amounts of destruction. So the idea of this protest was basically to get the public's attention by any means necessary. We didn't know what to expect, really. Is it just for the vegetarian or something? Vegan. All right, and well, I have that, done that other animal rights protests. Some of the <laughs> yeah. sexiest com uh, content in the history of the Glenn Mercer show. <laughs> well, it got a lot. And then we were also able to, we did hire a professional videographer and producer for that. And he did a great job. And then he got it on Now This. So it got like a million views on Now This. A lot of our content, uh, our original series uh, also go on PBS stations around the United States, um, which I can show you that. But first, here is a fun little promo we just put together that kind of explains why you should download Unchained TV. So it's a vegan Netflix. Okay, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I love Unchained TV. Unchained, Unchained TV. Your life will change. That's just, it's just that easy. Unchained TV has all sorts of content for everybody. Unchained TV changed my life. Unchained TV is crushing it. I love Unchained TV. Unchained TV is my go-to. Unchained TV, who knew? Unchained, baby, yay! So the, the woman who said Unchained, baby, is Catherine Hardwick, who is the director of the Twilight series. And wow. we ran into her at a uh, Last Chance for Animals gala, and she gave us a great interview. So, yeah, so you're getting a sense of, <clears throat> excuse me, um, all the different kinds of content. I could be here all day. Let me just show you New Day, New Chef. This is the one who all that is also gone on PBS. Hi, I'm Maggie Baird. Welcome back to New Day, New Chef Support and Feed Edition. Here's what's coming up on today's episode. Support and Feed gets food from vegan restaurants and delivers it to those in need. So we want to introduce you to the plant-based chefs who are whipping up those healthy and tasty dishes. Thank you guys so much for donating to Support and Feed and helping people out in this challenging time. Love ya. Coming up, chefs Molly and Elias teach us the perfect way to wrap a burrito. And today's co-host, world famous supermodel Joanna Krupa bears the naked truth about her work with PETA. Plus, Maggie Baird returns to update us on the work of support and feed. Welcome to New Day, New Chef, Support and Feed Edition. 
Jane Velez Mitchell. Welcome to New Day New Chef. This is the Support and Feed Edition. The chefs you're about to meet are in a very special studio accompanied only by robotic cameras. Now, this we did during the pandemic. That's me in my living room. And uh, we, due to the brilliance of our producer, managed to pull this off with Maggie Baird, who's Billie Eilish's mom and Phineas's mom, and uh, do a, a series, even though everybody was in a lockdown. But we have 22 episodes featuring the likes of uh, Miyoko and other very well-known people in the vegan movement and tons of celebrities as well. Uh, you may recognize this lady from... Uh, <laughs> she's uh she played Hi, the I'm um, Maggie Baird. Welcome back. Uh she played the uh, uh let me find her. She played Mrs. Pat Morton, especially yeah, Pat Moore on Down Abbey, down there in the so low class. Yes. yes. She is a vegan. vegan. Yeah, she's a vegan and she participated. And the woman cooking is Angela Means, who was in the Friday movie. And you may remember the famous phrase by Felicia, that is Felicia. So um, I could go on for hours and hours. You are getting um, a very good sort of overview of all the content we have, and we continue to upload it. I just got uh, another 12 videos that I'm going to spend uploading tonight. Um, and again, we're showing people content that is completely ignored by mainstream media. And we also tell the animal side of the story. Uh, we were just at a rodeo um, protest in Los Angeles and the news media was covering it in their typical way. And we certainly told the animal side of the story. I can show you that very, uh, okay. very quickly. And uh, animals have rights. 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 Animal have rights. Shown up now as this confrontation gets more heated. A war of words erupted outside LA City Hall as animal rights activists press for a ban on cool rodeos in Los Angeles. This is what we're talking about. Last Chance for Animals is showing the video of what actually happens to animals in rodeos. It is not entertainment, it is torture. And there is no need for any of that violence to be inflicted on animals for people to experience entertainment. Who are we as a species that this is considered fun? Opposing them, men and women on horseback, wearing mariachi sombreros and cowboy hats, who claim rodeos are an expression of their Latino heritage. To that, Latino animal rights activists, including myself, said nonsense. Cruel roping and slamming of animals in no way represents the Latino culture and called that claim manipulative political theater. Latinos love animals! Bad rodeos! Latinos love animals! Latinos love animals! Latinos love animals! Basta con el abuso de los animales! You are you cowboys. Are you would you would you uh, would you allow your horses, these beautiful animals, to go in the rodeo? Tell me one person out there, one person that would allow their horses to go in the rodeo. You wouldn't allow it because they abuse them and you know it. Right there. We take the rodeo. So anyway, this story, okay, we were the only ones who really covered both sides of the story. What happened was a lot of the local news media was very entranced by the the political theater of people showing up on horseback in sombreros. Uh, you know, they may have bought them on Amazon four days ago. And it, I would say every sombrero and and cowboy hat west of the Mississippi was in the council chambers. <laughs> so what we're doing now is we're working with the uh, a, a Latina leader from the Humane League and the uh, head of PETA Latino uh, there's a man doing a documentary about rodeos, and next Monday they're going to be here where I'm sitting in my living room, a.k.a. world headquarters of uh, Unchained TV, and we're going to show the other side. We have a whole group of Latino leaders in the animal rights world who are gathering to tell the other side 
of that story. Um, so that's the kind of thing we cover that nobody else covers in any way, shape, or form. Final thing I'll say, I'll just show you this. UCLA held its very first Veg Fest. Now, you would think that would be a fun story for local media, right? Well, of course not. No, of course not. They've never showed up at any Veg Fest that I've ever seen. Um, you know, uh, maybe a couple of exceptions, but no, there's generally complete, you know, again, the media blackout because Veg Fest, the whole message conflicts with the fast food commercials and the pharmaceutical commercials. So we were there. <laughs> We've never had a veg fest here at UCLA before, um, but we do have quite a large vegan community, both on campus and off campus in the LA area. So I just thought it would be, it was the time to bring everyone together. And I thought veg fest would be a really cool way to do so. You know, food brings everyone together, um, live music and everything. And this event has been like exceeded my expectations of bringing this community together. So I'm very happy about it. inspired by another veg fest at a different college nearby and we were just like let's bring veg fest to UCLA it's never happened before and we really want to just be able to spread awareness about factory farming spread awareness about plant-based eating vegan lifestyles and all of the benefits of that and we wanted to bring that to you the UCLA community and you can see we had a booth there so we also set up booths we had to pay for that so you know a lot of the stuff we do editing that editing takes a lot of time and yeah. I shot it, but we have a professional editor who puts the editing together. And, uh, you know, a lot of this is labor intensive. I mean, I'm putting in 12 hours a day, but I enjoy it. What else would I be doing? You know, All right. well, well, let's end the screen share now and let me okay. ask you a few questions. Sure. Thank you for allowing you made... me to do that. <laughs> All right. If you've ever wanted to show off your plant-based lifestyle and do it in style, here's your chance. We have some of the most amazing t-shirts, hats, accessories, coffee mugs, and more at shop.realmeneatplants.com. We have statement t-shirts that will bring a smile to everyone's face. I love the I want tofu tonight tea. Plus we have podcast teas, real women eat plants gear, real kids eat plants, and real people eat plants just in case men, women, and kids didn't cover it all. Yeah, we love you and love that you want to show off that healthy lifestyle of yours. Again, check out our high quality gear at shop.realmeneatplants.com and enjoy. Let me ask you a few questions about how you made this transition from being a CNN reporter to the founder of uh, Unchained TV and, you know, an animal rights activist. Well, I was pretty much always an animal rights activist. If you look at my high school yearbook photo, it has to do with animal rights activism. Well, when did you become vegan? About 27 years ago. I have my sobriety date. I'm 28 years sober and knock on, knock on wood. April 1st, I'll be 29 years sober. And it was about a year after that. I wish I had my, my vegan date the way I have my sobriety date. Yeah. But um, it was after I got sober and had clarity, I went from being a vegetarian, which I was raised pretty much a pescatarian by my family. My mom was from Puerto Rico, from Vieques, the island of Vieques, which was part of the Commonwealth. My dad was Irish. And my mother actually, um, when she was a child, had a friend who was a pig. And then that friend was slaughtered and she literally fainted as a child. And when she came to, she never ate meat. So she came to the United, well, Puerto Rico is part of the United States. It's the Commonwealth. But she came to New York and formed a very successful dance troupe, Anita Vela's Dancers. My dad was an advertising executive straight out of Mad Men with an agency on Madison Avenue. And they were both very good dancers. That's what brought them together, ballroom dancers. And they love to stop traffic and dance. And uh, in any case, he switched to we were we thought we were vegetarians growing up, um, but we were, uh, I would say, pescatarian primarily. I mean, it wasn't the strict thing. I would remember maybe my father at at Thanksgiving might take a little bit of a turkey slice. But in our house, we didn't have meat uh, except for fish. 
And primarily we did not cook at home. My Neither of my parents could cook. And so we would go out to dinner every night pretty much. And wow. um, yeah, well, I grew up in Midtown Manhattan, directly across from Carnegie Hall, 57th and 7th, which was a pretty right. fun place to grow up. Sure. Um, and uh, so anyway, I thought I was, I was, we, we didn't know all these terms. My mother was very avant-garde. So she was vegetarian or pescatarian, but you know, we leaned toward vegetarian. And then uh, she was doing yoga uh, in the forties when nobody knew what the hell yoga was. She was a hyphen, she kept her name. She was Anita Velez Mitchell. So that's why when I got to be an adult, I added my mother's name because I was born Jane Mitchell. And uh, I felt uh, it would better express who I really was to add my mother's name. So I'm Jane Velez Mitchell. And um, so uh, uh, basically, I, I went to NYU. I became a reporter. I worked in Fort Myers, Florida, Minneapolis, uh, Philadelphia. Then I came back, worked at my in my hometown, literally four blocks from where my parents lived at WCBS TV for eight years. Uh, which was at 57th between 10th and 11th. And I grew up on 57th and 7th. And I was weekend anchor and reporter. And then I got a chance to come out here to LA to be a weekday reporter, weekday anchor, excuse me, at KCAL TV, which was at that time just purchased by Disney as part of a new project to get into news. And it was very exciting. It was, they hired all the staff at once. It was on the Paramount lot. And I was elated to get this job because I remember my last story as a reporter, perhaps one of my last was like on the Triborough bridge covering a sick out because the people claimed that fumes were making them sick. And after about eight hours on that bridge, I was like, I'm sick. <laughs> get me out of here. You know, uh, I grew up in Manhattan, but covering, we cover a lot of murders and cover a lot of very difficult things. It was grueling. So the chance of being a full-time anchor was very appealing to me. So I came out here in 1990 and I spent 12 years at K uh, KCAL TV on the Paramount lot, which was such a thrill to work there. And, uh, you know, I just thought, wow, this is, this is a whole lot of fun. And 12 years is a long time for any job. Then the management changed and I left and I went to celebrity justice, which is the precur was the precursor to TMZ, the tabloid, uh, mm -hmm media enterprise. So um, I ended up covering the Michael Jackson trial in Santa Maria, California, and that was a global mega event. I mean, literally like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of news media from all around the world. I was asked to be Nancy Grace's nightly reporter from the trial. So I would do my own story for Celebrity Justice, and then I would do I was on for an hour every night, pretty much, for this trial. And so I got global, I got a lot of, it. you know, it was, it was putting me on the map. I was on Larry King Live the night of the, the day of the arraignment. Remember when he danced on the truck uh, mm -hmm. after? Yeah, well, anyway, he did a little dance and that was a big moment. I was right there. Um, I went to Neverland. I was in, uh -huh. I did a tour of Neverland and did I was- Did you ever interview Michael Jackson? Uh, well, when we- he would come into court and he didn't say anything, but we were right there hoping for, but mm -hmm. once, once he was in court and I was in court, swear to God, nobody saw this, but he looked at me and he said, this was actually an earlier trial. He had had a couple of trials uh, in that there were a couple of, he had a lot of litigation and one of the litigations, he looked at me and he said, nice smile. <laughs> that did happen. But I'll tell you, he was very charismatic because yeah. the the reporters were very divided. There was literally people couldn't have dinner with each other because of the intense feelings about the case, which still persists to this day. And um, uh, nevertheless, he had this intense charisma. When he came out of court, everybody would kind of become so mesmerized and people would say things afterwards. He made eye contact with me. You know, so it's very interesting study. However you feel about the case, I don't want to get into it, but it was very interesting seeing somebody who had this sort of very interesting charisma that even people who couldn't, who dis, you know, disagree with him and felt that uh, he was guilty would still be very gaga over the interactions. Uh, it was really a case study in celebrity culture. So anyway, 
After that, our show ended. And like I said, I started filling in for Nancy Grace when she was on vacation. And then I got a call, do you want your own show? I honestly thought I was going to have it for two months because it was a case of somebody reportedly having a hissy fit and storming off and they needed to replace that person. So I thought, well, I'm going to keep my apartment here, my condo here. I'm going to be there for two months. And I just went back to New York and moved in with my mother at 57th and 7th, where she's, we live for, you know, I felt like a century. And uh, that was right near the Time Warner Center. I literally could get to work in five minutes. So uh, it turns out I ended up there for six years, which is a good run, you know? Uh, So that's, now we've come full circle. You know my whole story. And at what point along the way did you go from vegetarian to vegan? Well, that's an interesting story. So I was in um, my studio at Paramount Studios, where we had our show. And in walks Howard Lyman, the fourth generation cattle rancher who- uh, Howard and I did the book Mad Cowboy together. Yeah, so we, we have a connection. We have a connection. So- he was uh, a, a cause celeb, famous. You know, he had this moment in the spotlight because he had been on Oprah. You probably know this story a lot better than I, I do. I and it was a long time ago. So my my recollection of the details are a little bit funny, fuzzy, except for one very important moment. So uh, I believe he had the book Mad Cowboy and I interviewed him. And um, he had revealed again, just that he had on uh, the Oprah show, which resulted in her getting sued by the cattleman, but she won. Um he revealed the horrors of the cattle industry and the dairy industry. And then I went back to my cubicle and he and his publicist named Mar Nealon, yes. who later became a friend, walked up to me and they said, they came up to my cubicle and they said, <clears throat> we hear you're a vegetarian. And I said, yes, proudly. And they said, do you eat dairy? And I kind of went like this and I hung my head because he had just revealed how the mothers are, you know, the babies are abducted and the, the mothers are forcibly impregnated and, uh, you know, the, the veal calves. And I said, yes. And they said, liquid meat, like that, right at my nose, <laughs> liquid meat. That was the moment I went vegan, right at that moment. Now, if they had said to me, well, we really think you should consider giving up dairy, because I probably wouldn't have heard it. I was newly sober person. I was just getting yeah. clarity. But when they stuck their finger right in my nose and said liquid meat, I got it. And so when people say don't be confrontational, that's not violent. That's just confrontational and direct. I say to them, sometimes you need to be confrontational and direct to get the message across. I dropped it right at that moment because I was confronted and they forced me without saying much of anything, but they obviously forced me to to face my own hypocrisy. Oh, I'm a vegetarian. No, half measures avail us nothing. Do it. And it's, I thank them every, you know, every time I think of that, because who knows how long I might've lingered eating dairy products to the, to the detriment of my own health, the planet and animals. So that was the last time that I knowingly had dairy. Now, a couple of months later, I was at a restaurant and somebody threw Parmesan cheese on my salad. That doesn't and, no, no, but wait a second. I used to love Parmesan cheese. Yeah. I tasted it and I gagged. My taste buds had uh-huh. changed. And I immediately went, Ugh, this has got dairy in it. It was disgusting to me. So for people who say you can never give up dairy, give it. There's a reason why rehab is at least 30 days and often 90 days. It takes a little bit of time to get the taste buds back to their factory settings. You just have to give it at least a month. Well, I'm proud that my old friends Howard and Mar played that role in your life and helped create the person who founded Unchained TV. So I know you have to go, but please give one last plug for Unchained TV, and then we'll see you next time. Glenn, I want to thank you for the opportunity to urge everybody, if you care about animals, if you care about human health, if you care about planet, we are barreling toward a climate apocalypse. There are too many people to talk to them one-on-one. I beg you to download Unchained TV. It is 100% free. It doesn't bite. Okay? people. Some people have a little resistance to downloading. 
Get over it. Okay, our house is on fire, as Greta Thunberg says. You can download it right on your phone. Super fun, free. I would prefer if you put your email in, but you don't have to. I make it as easy as we can. People have argued with me. You need to have subscribers. You, you need to have the number. I said, anything that creates a barrier, I want to remove. Okay, the uh, one woman said to me the other day, she watched three videos and went vegan. She went, watched three of my video of the videos on our streaming network. So download it on your phone. If you, a lot of people have Samsung TVs, millions, you can just go right to the smart hub and put in, unsh it pops up and I'll show you it's, it's right up there with, um, it, it's right up there with, uh, see how it's right there. If you look yeah. that red, that's Netflix, that's Amazon prime. That's Unchained TV. That's what will happen. Good location, 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 no, location. No, no. I dragged it there. Once you download <laughs> it, it puts it somewhere, and uh -huh. then you drag it to wherever you want on your home screen. Think of a TV as a big computer now. See, a lot of people are like, well, uh, for vegans who say, I don't watch TV, guess what? The rest of the world does. Okay? Except life on life's terms. TV ain't going anywhere. It's getting bigger and bigger. It's just not cable and broadcast anymore it's streaming streaming has overtaken broadcasting cable and the movie business as well okay people are watching movies i i mean i think i'm pretty typical i haven't gone to an average movie in more than four years and i used to love going to the movies because why not in two weeks it's going to be on my tv and i can just sit here and make my own popcorn and watch it mm -hmm. so i would just urge everybody if you we have to think we have to not just work harder, we have to work smarter. I do not own Unshade TV. I do not take a salary. I am doing this because every morning I wake up and I say, how can we reach the people who need this? Not other vegans, but the people who need, if we had an army of vegans sharing this content out, downloading it and sharing it and getting five other people every day to download it, we could literally become as big as a Netflix or a CNN, we could do it, but it, it just takes a village. So I'm inviting, I'm not begging anymore, take that word away. I'm inviting everybody to be part of the solution. Doesn't take any work. This is all easy. You're not having to walk around with a bullhorn or drag signs anywhere, but it's very effective. So I wanna thank you, Glenn, for giving me the opportunity. Well, thank you, Jane, for joining us. I ask everyone to please, Download Unchained TV, become a subscriber. And uh, while you're at it, you could subscribe to my channel too. All right. Thank you, Jane. We'll see you soon. Bye, Glenn. This has been the Glenn Mercer Show, where everyone listening turns vegan, regains their health, and annoys their friends and relatives. Find us on YouTube at The Glenn Merzer Show and across all your major podcast platforms. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>